Hi, I'm Val Wilson. And I'm Elena Joanaco. And we're going to tell you about uh, the work that we did together with Jean-Francois Nicolas that was published in Developmental Cell in 2009. We're interested in how during embryo development, cells that were initially able to produce all the regions and cell types in the adult make a series of lineage choices, first into broad domains, giving rise to a body plan, and then to smaller and smaller subsets of more differentiated cell types. So in order to know what are those lineage segregations, it's actually necessary to know about the fate choices made by individual cells, and that is to carry out a clonal analysis. So the major clonal analysis study in mouse had been done almost two decades previously by Kirsty Lawson, who constructed what is now used as the standard fate map of the early gastrulation mouse embryo. But her experiments were done in culture and couldn't tell us anything about the long-term fate of individual cells or their progressive restriction in fate, which is something we all thought happens, but at the time there was limited evidence for this. So we were interested in particular in the emergence of cells that will become the skeleton, muscles and the nervous system. So this is a process that takes several days in mice and it relies on a set of progenitor cells in the primitive streak and the tailbud. In our previous experiments we found that those progenitors occupy a very small subregion of the primitive streak and the tailbud and some of our experiments had hinted that they were stem cells. So in those studies, um, we also need clonal analysis to know whether single cells can both make differentiated cells and more copies of themselves, a process called self-renewal. So Elena, who was doing her PhD in my lab, used a technology that had first been developed by Jean-François Nicolas. He had devised a genetic method of labelling single cells and their descendants, allowing them to be tracked over very long periods in undisturbed embryos. In fact, his studies already pointed to a stem cell progenitor for the muscle, but because of the constraints of the study itself, the muscle-specific promoter that he used, it wasn't possible to say where that progenitor was or whether it was restricted only to muscle or actually was a stem cell that gives rise to more cell types. A similar study that he did of, of the nervous system with Luc Matisse also suggested that the nervous system was derived from a stem cell progenitor, but there was no way of knowing whether it was the same progenitor as the one for muscle. So these two problems, whether muscle and nervous system share a common progenitor, and whether or not these progenitors were stem cells, required a clonal analysis approach that could report on all tissues in the mouse embryo. I started the project in Val's lab and later continued in Jean-François Nicolas' lab when I moved to the Pasteur Institute in Paris. We carried the work out as a collaboration as part of the European consortium Eurostem Cell. I first constructed mouse lines that allow us to visualize all descendants of single labeled cells irrespective of their tissue distribution. Using these lines, we generated thousands of labelled embryos in order to get a comprehensive representation of all progenitor types present in the embryo during axis development. The prevailing idea was that the three germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm, are formed by the epiblast at gastrulation. These early progenitors were considered as the first branch point in the differentiation of the pluripotent epiblast towards tissue-restricted precursors. So, for example, head and trunk mesoderm would be produced by further differentiation of a mesoderm progenitor, while surface and neural ectoderm would emerge from an ectoderm progenitor. The results of this study challenge this view, showing that there is a closer relationship between neural ectoderm and mesoderm than between neural and surface ectoderm. We found that after segregation of endoderm and surface ectoderm at gastrulation, single progenitor cells continue to give rise to both neurectoderm and mesoderm of the posterior axis, including the tail. These progenitors therefore transgress what was previously thought to be a lineage buyer after gastrulation between neurectoderm and mesoderm, and imply that the germ layer concept has a location rather than a lineage-based significance. Neuromesodermal progenitors behave as stem cells. Once they are labelled, they produce differentiated derivatives that extend over long axial distances up to the caudal end of the embryo where they reside, suggesting therefore that they can self-renew. 
The presence of these common neuromesodermal progenitors may represent a developmental strategy that allows the embryo to maintain a balance in the relative amounts of neural and mesodermal tissues produced and also coordinate this differentiation process with progenitor self-renewal, which is in turn necessary for the continuation of axial elongation. These results raise new questions, in particular about the gene network operating in the cells to control the different fate choices. In a recent study by the group of Hisato Kondo, it was shown that part of this balance depends on the repression of SOX2 by TBX6 that diverts cells from a neural fate to paraxial mesoderm. We think that these results will also be important when devising protocols for ESL's differentiation, Driving cells to make linear choices that are similar to those that the cells make in vivo should allow scientists to produce pure populations of cell types that are difficult to obtain at present.